Uh, Rakesh Arora is uh, now joining us uh, on the phone line. Rakesh, good morning. Uh, what do you, uh, you know, make out of this deal, especially for Grasim? See, for Grasim, which was already a holding company, uh, it becomes an even more uh, bigger, uh, you know, conglomerate. So, to that extent, it's slightly negative. Uh, I mean, already it was uh, trading at a 40-50% discount uh, to its subsidiary, Ultratech. And now I think, you know, the discount will widen further. Uh, given, uh, you know, all these uh, unrelated businesses coming into it. So, from a medium-term perspective, I would say, you know, it's a little bit negative. And uh, I think the stock will adjust uh, for this higher holding company discount uh, in the near term. Right. Uh, you know, as far as uh, this merger is concerned, uh, you know, does it just make uh, Grasim's structure much more complicated? Yeah, I mean, it makes it much more complicated to analyze uh, because you need to know various sectors, etc. And uh, very few analysts uh, will be able to cover it. And uh, so that is the challenge uh, which Grasim will face. Uh, also, historically, if you see, you know, subsidies like Ultratech, which are pure plays, have created much higher shareholder value as compared to Grasim itself. So I think, uh, you know, longer term, uh, people, investors would be better off investing into the subsidies directly uh, because the value creation in Gaston will be slightly lower. Right. You know, yesterday on the con call, one big worry was what happens to IDEA, who funds IDEA's CAPEX needs going ahead. Uh, do you think that, uh, you know, that, that is not a big concern, the debt of IDEA will not come on Grasim's book and it will really not have any major impact? Uh, see, first of all, uh, you know, you know, it is foolhardy to say that there will be no impact on Grasim because of idea. Once you become a majority shareholder, uh, there is a moral obligation, even if it is not uh, a strict financial obligation. So my point is that uh, if there is distress in idea, will Grasim be away, will be able to walk away from it? Unlikely. So to that extent, uh, the risks have actually gone up, but may not be, you know, immediately in terms of, uh, you know, financing from its balance sheet uh, directly. Right. Uh, as far as, uh, you know, uh, Grasim is concerned, right now it would be about 30-40% holding discount. Will that expand because of the complicated structure, maybe about 50%? Yes, yeah, so uh, the holding company discount for Grasim has ranged uh, between 40 to 60%. And now I think it should uh, trade more like 60 to 70%. So, you know, 10% additional discount in Ultratech is a big 6, 7,000 crores of impact on Grasim's uh, market cap. Right. Uh, overall, as far as uh, AB Nuvo is concerned or Grasim, you know, is concerned, they would also get the business of, uh, you know, financial services coming in. That is a positive. It's, it's, it's a high growth business that we are talking about. Uh, see, Pankaj, the issue is, one should let the investors choose what they want to invest in. Nothing should be forced upon them. So it is not a question of a high growth business or low growth business. It's a question that you are being forced to invest into a business which you may not like to. Right. And uh, the shareholders meeting, whenever it happens, it will be an interesting one. You believe it will be difficult for them to convince all the shareholders? Yeah, I think there's a tough task lies ahead with the company management to go and convince their story. Because as of now, you know, it's not very clear what is the benefit the minority shareholders are getting. So it's going to be an uphill task uh, for them. Right, Rakesh. Thank you so much for uh, joining us this morning.